Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers with another running shoe review. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Asics Gel Cumulus 23. Let's take a look. The Asics Gel Cumulus 23 costs £120 or $120. It weighs in at 290 grams or 10.2 ounces for men in a size 8.5, and the drop is 10 millimeters. The Asics Gel Cumulus 23 is a neutral running shoe that's designed for accessibility and comfort. There's a modest level of cushioning in the midsole that deadens the impact of running without being soft, but at the same time doesn't feel too hard or firm. In the heel is a wedge of Asics Gel technology to add extra cushioning from heel impact, and there's now a strip of flight flow midsole foam that runs the whole length of the shoe. It features a 3D space construction design which aims to give a personalised level of compression for different runners, specifically between men and women, and the upper is an engineered mesh material that has varying levels of thickness for breathability and comfort. The outsole is covered by a generous helping of light rubber that does an impressive job of upping the durability of the shoe as well as adding grip on wet surfaces. So the fit for me in the Gel Cumulus 23 fits true to size. It's quite a roomy and generous shoe in the forefoot and the midfoot so I did find that I had to pull the laces together quite more, more tightly than I would normally to get a lockdown fit but once I'd done that it felt completely fine and this extra space in the front of the shoe did feel really comfortable and you've got a lot of room for your toes to move around in so if you've got wider feet it's probably a good option. So I've done about 50k in the Gel Cumulus 23 so far, and that's been around 10k to 12k um, training runs mainly. And what I found is that it's a very average shoe in a lot of ways. There's nothing that really stands out about this shoe. But that's not really a bad thing because it really does do the job of a all-round daily shoe. I didn't find anything bad about this shoe. But equally, I didn't really find anything that I thought was really impressive or amazing about it. It just felt fine on every run that I did and I had no issues with it, but also I wasn't amazed by it. There's ample cushioning in here, but it's not really that noticeable. So even though there is cushioning in it, you can't really feel it when you're out on the run. And some, sometimes when I was running, I did find it to be a bit on the firm side because I, I like a cushioned shoe. I like a soft shoe, especially when it comes to daily training miles. This just felt a little bit firmer than what I would normally go for. Not massively, I didn't I didn't find it a problem. I just, by the end of the run, I just thought, mm, that wasn't as cushioned as I would normally like from a shoe. But it just kind of sits in this middling ground of being slightly cushioned, but also slightly firm. So if you don't know what you want from a shoe, this is a nice option for sort of testing the water and seeing what, what works for you. Despite the more generous fit in the forefoot, the overall feel of the shoe is very secure. There's a quite a lot of padding around the upper section of the shoe, which is quite comfortable, but also holds the foot in place. And the heel really does fit quite nicely into that heel section there. So when you're out running, it just feels like it's a shoe that you don't really have to think about. There's no movement in the shoe. Uh, and along with the midsole and outsole, it feels like a very stable ride. Perhaps one of the biggest features of this shoe along with many other ASIC shoes, is the gel. Now in this heel section here, you can see this extra sort of block of blue gel, and that's designed to add a lot more cushioning um, and softness in the heel section. So when you're hitting the ground with your heel, it'll deaden more impact than you're getting from the front of the shoe, which is a bit firmer. I'm not a heel striker, I didn't really notice it. I definitely didn't feel like there was more softness in the back of the shoe, I, I tend to hit more towards the forefoot and the midfoot when I run, so it's not really for me. But I can see that if you're a heel striker, it might help a bit, but I, I definitely can't say that that is the case uh, when I was running in it. Another thing about this shoe is that it has a relatively low stack height. So for men, that's 23 millimeters. I think it's 22 millimeters for women. So in comparison to some other daily shoes, that's a little bit thinner, which means that you do feel a bit closer to the ground. There's a bit more ground contact and it's certainly more enjoyable if that's the sort of runner you are and you're not really a big fan of heavily cushioned shoes. So you get a little bit more feel for the road um, and it's a little bit more responsive um, and firmer as a result of that. There's also a 
healthy layer of rubber on the outsole. It doesn't cover the whole outsole, but there's enough to really mean that that, that midsole section is really not going to get touched because there's quite a big dip from the rubber to the midsole. And that rubber is pretty thick. It's also very good at grip. I was really impressed with this rubber, actually. It's probably one of the, my, my favorite features of this shoe. Um, I've been running a lot on wet ground at the moment and it's been fantastic at gripping and after 50k of running there's, there really is no sign of that rubber wearing down so I think it's a pretty tough rubber on the outsole there so in terms of durability and grip it's a it, there's some good features in this shoe. The upper is made from a one piece engineered mesh material which again I, I, I think is really quite fine. It has reinforcement around various areas of the shoe mainly around the midfoot section and the back section of the shoe uh, and at the front section it's a lot lighter so there's a there's a thinner material that sits at the front it feels very breathable i felt very comfortable in this shoe it didn't feel hot um, even though it does look like a little bit more of a chunkier shoe than what i'd normally like to wear for hotter runs uh, but i felt completely fine and um, really breathable over my runs. so i think that's another nice feature of this shoe Another thing that ASICs have added into this shoe is something called 3D space construction. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about what that is because to be honest I hate it when shoe brands use scientific terms for something that is actually relatively simple. The concept is that men and women have different needs when it comes to the foams in running shoes and the compression of the midsole foam in both of the men and women's shoes is slightly different based on those needs. I didn't really notice any major difference in this shoe to any other shoe that I've worn. So I don't know what that effect is. I can't speak for the women's shoe, um, but it's there. So they have t tailored towards the fact that men and women run differently. And hopefully that works. So they're the features. Over that 50K of running, I've just found it to be a very competent shoe. It ticks a lot of boxes. It doesn't really excel in any area. I didn't really notice anything when I was running in it. I, def I didn't feel it was too soft. I didn't feel it was too bouncy. I didn't feel it was too hard. It just feels absolutely fine. And all those runs that I did in it, I had no issue with them at all. I didn't particularly, I wasn't wowed by the shoe in any way at all, but I wasn't disappointed in any way at all. I'd be happy to pick this shoe up and use it for pretty much any run from a 5K jog all the way up to maybe a half marathon training run. But I'm very unlikely to pick it over my other shoes that are more specifically designed for the different types of runs that I'm doing. So. It's a very good all-rounder shoe in the way that it, it's not going to disappoint you. But also, if you want a specific feeling or a specific type of technology in your shoe, you're probably not going to get it from this shoe. You're just going to get a reliable, good shoe that can do most of it. So my verdict on the Asics Gel Cumulus 20th is that it's a solid, straightforward, no-nonsense shoe that if you are a beginner or you're somebody that just wants one pair of shoes and you're just doing daily runs where you're not really aiming for a race or you're not doing a specific type of run, it's fine. It'll, you, you'll, you won't be disappointed by this shoe. But if, you, if you're a more seasoned runner and you have specific types of runs, like if you're doing long runs and tempo runs and you're doing races, it's not going to excel in any of those areas. It's 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 just a solid, reliable shoe that just really works for possibly people that don't really know what type of shoe they're, they're getting. I can imagine it being a good shoe, and, I, and this is where I think the shoe has lasted so long, it's on the 23rd version now, is that it's a great shoe for people who maybe are just starting running. They go into a shop and they say, right, I need a shoe, and I, I'm just going to go out running every day. You don't want to have a really specialized shoe for that. You don't want to start putting carbon plates in your feet for, for doing those sorts of runs. This shoe is just solid, stable, reliable, comfortable, has a lot of space in it, and just does everything you need from a sort of beginner shoe. As I say, if you get to those more advanced levels of running where you're actually focusing on different types of runs, you're going to find other shoes are far better at those runs than this shoe is for pretty much any of them. But for all round running, it's completely fine. And you could probably go all the way up to a marathon in this shoe and it would be completely competent at doing it. It just wouldn't be amazing at it. I quite like the fact that the cushioning is not really that noticeable. It means that it's more accessible to every type of runner. So if you were a beginner and you went and picked up a shoe that had really lots of cushioning in it and you ran it a few times and realized you didn't really want a shoe with lots of cushioning, you're going to be annoyed and you're going to want to get another pair of shoes. 
if you don't know if you want cushioning in your shoe, if you don't know if you want a firm shoe, this is a good option because it's not really either of them. It's got a bit of both and it will just keep you happy for any run without really having any major issues. So overall, it just, it doesn't have any dif distinguishing features that I would say it's great at these things. But then again, it doesn't have anything at all that I think is bad in this shoe. It's just a very nice middling shoe that anybody could wear and be completely happy with, but you're never gonna be wowed or amazed by it. It's just gonna be reliable and it's just gonna do the job. Alternatives for me it, over the A6 Gel Cumulus 23 would be the Socony Ride, which is very similar in the way that it's quite firm in comparison to a lot of cushion shoes, but it has cushioning. And it's just a great daily shoe for people that just want something that sits along the on the fence and just gives you a bit of everything without really excelling. You could also go for the Nike Pegasus 38, a little bit more cushioning in that shoe, but again, it's quite a good daily racer. I'd probably opt for the Pegasus 38 over this one because I like a little bit more cushioning, but there's really not a lot in it for me. If you are a beginner or if you are looking for one shoe to just do all of your running, I would probably go for the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V10 or V11. It has a lot more cushioning visibly than this shoe, but the ride itself is actually quite similar. There's not a lot of softness in the Fresh Foam 1080 V10 and 11 shoes. And as a result, it just feels quite nice and responsive and a nice all-rounder shoe. But I think that shoe is at least a little bit more comfortable. It's just a little bit more conducive to running a little bit faster. Um, and it's just got a bit more to it than this shoe. So that's a good option. I'd also say that you could also go for the Puma Velocity Nitro, which is again, more veering towards that new balance, Fresh Foam 1080 V11 side of things where there's a bit more cushioning. But again, it's still not a heavily cushioned shoe. There's a little bit of firmness to it. And also it comes in way cheaper than the shoe. The RRP for the Puma Velocity Nitro is 100 pounds. You can normally find it for around 50 pounds in a lot of shops. So if you're looking for an all-rounder shoe and you're a beginner, chances are you're probably not going to spend a load of money. This is £120 or $120. It's not really expensive for a running shoe, but there's other options out there like the Puma Velocity Nitro that are significantly cheaper, and I would probably prefer to run in those than this shoe. But overall, I can't say a bad thing about the A6 Gel Cumulus 23 because I think it's a very good shoe for a very specific type of runner, which is a beginner basically, or somebody that just wants a very general training shoe that ticks a lot of boxes. I think it's great. And that's probably one of the main reasons you see a lot of runners wearing the A6 Gel Cumulus 23 out on the streets because they just pick it up and it's fine. And they're not gonna find any problems with it because it just does a lot of what you want. And it's also probably gonna be quite durable as well. So you're not gonna be spending loads of money on running shoes if you're just doing loads of daily miles in it. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. It really does make a difference. And take a look at the channel for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching, see you soon.